The Badger 2040 is an ID badge powered by Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller, the same processor as used in the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can use it as an ID badge, a clock, an ebook reader, shopping list and more. But you can also hack it yourself and use it to play games. In this video I'll be showing what it is and how you can use it and in a future video I'll be showing you how you can create your own games to run on the Badger 2040. So if you'd like to see the future video please click subscribe and enable notifications. While you're at it if you could give this video a like that would be a great help as it helps get my videos noticed. This isn't the first interactive ID badge I've created. I previously created one using a Raspberry Pi Zero and an Inky P hat. I'll link to the earlier video in the description. There are some significant differences. Both use e-ink displays which use very little power and look great even in bright lights. The Raspberry Pi version had a smaller screen but on the plus it was a three colour screen, red, black and white, whereas the Badger 2040 has a black and white display. Another big difference is that the Raspberry Pi version is a full microcomputer running the Linux operating system whereas the Badger 2040 uses the RP2040 microcontroller. The Raspberry Pi was overkill for a badge. It's also bulky and consumes more power. The microcontroller is a much better fit. Let's take a look. This is the badge. As you can see, it's very thin, but that is without a battery. I'll talk about that in a bit. But first, let's have a look at what's on it. There are five buttons. There's three in the bottom and then two on the side. And that allows you to interact with the display. The display is currently showing what's known as the Badger OS. It's a simple interface allowing you to select different functions. There's no power at the moment, which means it just continues to display the last screen it was on. There's a hole for connecting to a lanyard, but it also includes four holes at the edges, which can be used to mount it on a fixed display, or it could be used to connect a case to protect the battery, etc. On the back, there's the RP2040 chip with a few other components to make that work. It has a USB-C connector, which is used for programming the device. This is different to the micro USB used on the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is the boot button, but it also can be used as a user select button. And there's also a reset button. There's a tiny little connector here, which is known as a quick or a stemmer QT connector. Essentially it's I squared C which can be used to connect to external devices. There are some pins broken out on the side. It doesn't really lend well to using an edge connector but it could be useful if you wanted to solder directly onto those pads. And then finally there's this larger connector which is for power. It can be connected to a LiPo battery or you can get a small AAA battery compartment with that connector on it. Either of these can be connected to the back using Velcro, but beware of the health and safety risks associated with LiPo batteries. For example, you may want to look at using a case, and it should be used by adults only. But the alternative is to use AAA batteries, which are much safer. The one thing that's not included is any kind of wireless connectivity. It's not something you'd need for its intended purpose as an ID badge, but it would open more opportunities, perhaps to check your public transport times or show the weather forecast. You can configure the ID badge through the Badger OS, which we'll look at now, or you can program it directly in either C or Python. But let's take a look at the Badger OS first. To do this, I'm going to have to connect the power supply. So I'm going to use a LiPo battery here. So this is one I actually used on my earlier Raspberry Pi based badge. It has the same connector. This has some Velcro on. I haven't put the corresponding Velcro on here yet, but I'll just connect that up. So I have already been configuring the Badger OS, so we should be able to see some of that on here. So we could start by looking at the clock. And as you can see, it's got a clock showing the time. Now, one of the things about this is that it doesn't have any kind of real time clock on it. So you'd have to reset that when you connect the power supply. 
but then it will keep a fairly accurate time after that. To go back, we press A and C, and that returns us to the front screen. Have a look at the fonts that are on. As you can see, there's various different fonts that are included, and you can use these in your code. And then the third option on this first screen is ebook. Uh, by default, it includes a book, Wind in the Willows. Um, I've uploaded a book here, but it, it appears to be not working, so I'll take a look at that in a minute and we'll put that on. Um, but it could be, for instance, you could put your notes for your conference speech or something like that on there. Page two gives you an image viewer, and you can put some basic two color images on here, or basic black and white images on here. That's the badger that includes as, as default, and here's my penguin tutor logo. As you can see, it's got dither in to give you the colors, but uh, it looks quite reasonable. got a list so you could use it as a shopping list and you can tick these off you can move around and tick them off as required and as you can see this has got a badger 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 uh, list which if you remember the uh, flash video that came out so that'd be a bit of a, a flash from the past there And then of course there's the ID badge. Um, and here's one I've uploaded earlier. You can create your own image and put your own words on there. Then we can go back to that and look at the bottom menu and you can generate QR codes and there's some information and help just scroll through that it gives you an explanation of how to use that how to change the font size uh, which is the user select button from the back right, so there's the badger os i'll show you quickly on the pc about how you can change some of these and then i'll also give a demo about a game that i've been uh, experimenting with this is the web page on the pimeroni website if you scroll down then there are links to the downloads for say the MicroPython, MicroPython examples and C++ examples. I'm particularly going to go on this link getting started with the Badger 2040 which shows you how you can get started and configure some of the Badger OS things that we've seen so far. It talks about batteries, and there's some examples of how you can use AAA batteries. And there's a, an example using a LiPo power pack as well. If you keep going down, it tells you how to get the Badger OS. And then here's some examples how you can show text, how you can update the shopping list, and create your own images, etc go through a few of these actually on the Badger 2040 itself. Then I'll just have a quick look in Thonny and you can see how this works. So just go on to uh, select the interpreter first from the run and make sure you're in Raspberry Pi Pico. That's the same microcontroller so it doesn't need a specific one for the RP for the Badger 2040. And just choose whichever TTY device is allocated, this is assuming this is a Unix system, it would be a USB port number on a Windows machine. It shows the device is busy and you can just click stop 
and that should give you an interpreter prompt down here. And you can run commands on there. Uh, if you click open, uh, you should have the option for the Pico and you can see some of the files on there. One thing that's useful, and it's not immediately obvious when you're in Thonny, but if you go to view and files, then it brings up this file browser. You can see the files on your local computer. As you see, I've created a folder where I've been creating some images and things like that. And then you can see them on here and transfer them to the appropriate folder. In the case of the image, so I've got the PNG image, but I need to convert that. You can convert it directly to a binary file using a script that was available from that website. Or if you've got a color image, you might want to do your own conversion using, say, the GIMP and resize it to the appropriate size first, and then you can use the script to convert it into a binary file. And that's all explained on the website. And you can just drag and drop these into this images folder where they will be available for the images. You can generate your own QR code and various things. And the book.txt is the book that you wanted to upload. It has to be just plain text. As you see, it takes a while to transfer this because it's quite a large file. And most of the others transfer really quickly. And this is just loading it directly off the Badger 2040. And in this case, you'll see this is the uh, Scouting for Boys by Robert Baden Powell. The default book that it's supplied with is Wind in the Willows. The checklist is that to do list that you saw, and the badge. You configure it with your own text, and you can upload an image as well. And this is also how you can upload your own code. You could try and integrate it with the Badger OS launcher, perhaps replacing the help screen or something like that. I haven't looked at that yet. Uh, you can see that the, the main just runs a launcher, so you could find out the code for that and see what that works with. But for my programming, I just created a little test program that displayed on the screen and I've also created a game which I've uploaded. Now you can either save it as main.py in which case you lose the Badger OS or so if you could give it another name then you'd have to launch it manually uh, each time you want to run it. Uh, here's the code that I've created for a simple game. This is tic-tac-toe or you may know it as noughts and crosses. I'm not going to go through the code at the moment. I'm going to create a future video which will show you a bit of an explanation of how this works. So I'm just going to show how I can use this to replace the main running program. So if we load this, it input la imports the launcher which does everything. If we overwrite this, then we won't be able to get back to that. So it's, it's easy enough to recreate. I'm just going to save a copy. And I'll just call this main.old. And then if I save a copy of this to the Pico, and I'm going to replace main.py. This will overwrite that. Ah, I need to close it from there first. So the reason I'm doing this is so that this will be called as soon as I can connect the power on because otherwise I've got to have it plugged into my PC. I'm going to take it over to my camera now and give you a, a quick demo of the game that I've created. Here's a quick demonstration of the game I've created. So it's tic-tac-toe or notes and crosses if you prefer. Uh, it's a pass and play game. So the first player is the X or the crosses. The second one is 
the circles, the notes. And then you see it's, it does a very quick refresh in between the cursor movements. And then when you press the button, it does a full refresh. And obviously I'm just gonna deliberately have this win nice and easy. And there we go, game over, and that's the winner. So I'll be showing all that in a future video. So that's just been a quick introduction for now. The Badger 2040 is a nice ink-based badge using the Raspberry Pi RP2040. Please subscribe to my channel and in future I'll be showing you how I created the game, including explaining how I created the circles using only straight lines. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a like if you found this useful and look forward to seeing you on a future video.